I would like to uh, call us back into order, uh, and I would now like to uh, recognize the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Norton, for five minutes of questions. Thank you, for, for, for particularly, Mr. Chairman, for rushing back, because I know you have to go to the floor again. Uh, I wish I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me say how helpful all of your testimony has been. You have reinforced a lot of what the Postal Service itself has said. And I want to say to you, Mr. Rolando, I have walked with my letter carrier. He is an indispensable party to the American people, far beyond delivering the mail. There are people who have nobody but a letter carrier uh, to speak to every day, particularly the elderly. They greet him at the door, even if they have got a walker. Thank you for all you do. You, you are wonderful. You, you're, you're, they are the best. Uh, uh, they're, they're your, your letter carriers are the best in, inventories. Uh, I, I want to just straighten two things out for, for my own thinking, certainly. Um, uh, I, I am well aware of what collective bargaining does for uh, those in trouble. Um, there, there is nothing more valuable than to have the cooperation of level-headed unions when you have got to manage uh, a, a downsizing uh, of any kind. And everybody ought to know that the reason you have been able, the Postal Service has been able to do what it does is because uh, its collective bargaining partners understand the business as well as the business with whom uh, they are dealing. So I congratulate you. I know the sacrifices you have taken. And you don't see the postal workers out here screaming and hollering because they got, they believe fairness has been accorded because it has been bargained. Uh, uh, and so I agree with your testimony. It says, look, don't, ta don't tamper with collective bargaining. If you really want to mess up this situation, just, just mess, mess with collective bargaining. Uh, now, Saturday delivery, I read your testimony on Saturday delivery. I want to know, is it subject to collective bargaining? Is, 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 is that bargained over? Uh, no, it is not. Now, you make a pretty compelling case uh, that there would be uh, very little savings. The, the, the thing that has made me interested in Saturday delivery is this overwhelming number of Americans, 75, 80 percent, said, okay, if, if that is what you have to do, that is what you could do. But you make a pretty compelling case, uh, uh, not simply about inconvenience to people. I understand that. And people, of course, uh, in, in, in hard times have to take that. But loss of business, that bothers me. Um, what do you mean about the loss of business? Who would get that business if Saturday delivery in those locations? And let's assume we had, in my hypothetical, uh, no Saturday delivery in just some locations, uh, but, but, but some you did have. In any case, who, where would the business go to and what would that mean for future business for the Postal Service? Uh, first, I, if I could, I would like to just comment on the, on the 75 to 80 percent uh, uh, that yes. you just alluded to. Uh, you have got to understand that it, it, it really depends on what you ask people as to how they are going to respond. If you ask people if they would rather have an increase in postal rates or lose a day of delivery, uh, you know, you're going to get one set of answers. If you, if you're truthful with people and, and give them the real options, uh, would you rather the postal service be allowed to transfer their own money uh, from an, a surplus in their pension fund or lose a day of delivery? I think you get a completely different. And of course, Mr. Sampy's testimony, and I think the testimony of the first panel was that uh, did, did not include Saturday delivery. I mean, you just said if you d dealt with these overpayments, uh, that you'd have a profitable enterprise. So, so go ahead. So th that takes care of the question. Now, uh, what about the, the loss of business? Who would get the business? Well, there is always going to be a need for, for delivery on Saturday. We talked about prescription drugs and, and, and other, uh, other things that the American people are going to need. Uh, Somebody is going to fill that vacuum if the Postal Service does. And you think that would have an effect on future business for the Post Office or that would carry over into your um, Monday through Friday business? A absolutely. It would affect the current business. It would affect the, the growing part of the business, which is people shopping online and, and parcel delivery when people are home on Saturday. Uh, it is just not a good idea where there is a lot of innovative things. That Let me ask you one more question then, because you, you made me understand that. 
Uh, could, we've had some testimony here about thousands, I don't know, thousands of postal workers um, that are on workers' compensation that could be on retirement. Would you clarify that? I mean, why aren't they, uh, why aren't they just, why don't, why don't they just retire? I am not real sure what the gentleman was, was referring to, but I, I know there has been proposals with regard to workers' compensation, which uh, we certainly are, are willing to look at. The important thing is that we don't punish our employees who are injured on the job and that we treat them fairly. Yeah. And there was some concern that these, these workers had no intention of coming back to work. Now, uh, I know the retirement age is 55, but somebody 55 these days better come back to work if you possibly can. Sure. Uh, I, I wonder if, if the union would take a close look at that, because it, it will not sound good to the American people if you are carrying people who could then be carried on their earned retirement benefits. Sure. Again, it is all how it is characterized. That is why I would have to take issue with the comment that was made. We would have to look behind it, because we certainly want to look for a fair way to treat these people and not punish them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Um, in light of uh, no other members here to uh, inquire and us about ready to go in for another vote here, uh, we are going to adjourn. I want to thank the gentlemen for the, of our second panel uh, and appreciate you all being here, taking time out of your schedule. We have just scratched the surface and look forward to working with you all on this issue. Thank you all very much and have a good day.